since this is the last piece, it's definitely going to be the trickiest. So let's see here. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's ridiculous. Welcome to another episode of Wrench. In this episode, we are finishing the, did you hear what I said right there? I said finishing the rear seat delete in this 1969 911 race car converted to a street car powered by a Subaru twin turbo engine, all the things in this episode. <laughs> I've already done three episodes trying to build out what once was a giant gaping hole where a seat used to be in this car. The big challenge is trying to weave all of this metalwork and woodwork in between all of these roll cage bars. I've done a ton of fabrication, including having to make the center tunnel from scratch because the center tunnel has to accommodate this Porsche G96. That's from the 996 transmission. So that is what has been handled in the previous three episodes. In this one, we're gonna finish it up. I've gotta finish the tunnel, and that's going to involve uh, initially some cardboard-aided design. And then I've gotta put the two back panels where kind of your seat back used to be. And then I'm gonna make some special brackets for the Haltech ECU and for my battery before welding everything up, maybe doing some reinforcing ribs and uh, giving it a coat of primer. So let's get into it with some cardboard aided design. So after a little grind, I've realized I'm gonna to have to re-bend this piece a little bit. It's not exactly the way I need it to be. So I'm centering it and marking the new bend. So I've gone back and forth so many times, but I think this is so close now that what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a, a little tack in this corner and then one in that corner, make sure that they're flush and the thing is located okay this way. Then I'll take the whole thing off, I'll flip it over and I'll put a tack in the middle so that I have a nice flush seam. Maybe I'll do two more, so I'll probably have like five. Okay, let me show you where I am with this now. I've got the top part tacked together and this is really smooth. I've got one side tacked and I've got the other side clamped. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kinda hammer form around this edge here and get this to be really flush and then put two more tack welds up there. And what we've got is an overlap. So I've got this piece is underneath and this is piece is over. So what I'm gonna do hopefully is a, if you guys are uh, Fitzy Fabrication fans, shout out to Fitzy for all the great knowledge. Uh, I'm gonna do a cut and butt or cut and butt. And what that involves is basically coming in here at a 45 degree angle with your grinding wheel. And that cuts both pieces of metal at the same time. Then you put them together and put a tack and you should have an absolutely perfect fit. So that's what I'm gonna try right now.
Okay, I've got this thing relatively secured now. So what I'm doing, and I don't know if it's best practice or not, but oftentimes I will kind of mock cut. I wanna make sure that I can see what I'm actually cutting, which might be about like this. But then I think the sparks are gonna be going this way, so I might have to go like this. Yeah, this is gonna be better. So that worked totally perfectly. I trimmed it up this way. Eventually this piece fell out of the inside. And now I have a perfect butt weld on that piece, ready for a little grinditudinalness. Secure it. Ground it. Cut it. Bud it. Secure it. Ground it. Cut it, but it. Before I finish this off, I want you guys to see kind of what I'm looking at here. You see these holes? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is put some weld at all these little spots and then re-grind until it's smooth. And you can see there's definitely a different inside story than the outside story. One thing I'm really digging about my new welding helmet is that it has a weld mode and a grind mode. So I can just flip a switch and it protects me from the grinding slag, and then it actually protects me from the weld as well. Guys, wait till you see this. Look how ridiculously good that looks. Look at that Stealth Fighter Trans Tunnel, you guys. I made that. How sick is that thing? All right, so now I've got to do these two back panels, and I've actually started mocking one up already here. So that thing's gonna go kinda like here-ish. So I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of metal. I should be able to basically flip this thing over. And if my measurements are relatively close and they are really close, then I should be able to get two pieces out of that deal. And then I'll have all the pieces. Just like everything else though, I'm gonna cut uh, some extra flangitudinalness because uh, we need epic flangitude, you guys. Okay, after about 20 minutes, I've got this piece cut and flanged, and now I'm gonna go try to offer it up to the car and see how close we are. Since this is the last piece, it's definitely gonna be the trickiest. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. All right, there it is in situ. I could not be happier with the fit. It looks just fantastic in there. All the flanges are great. 
Um, it's got just a little bit of fiddling to do. I've got a little bit of trimming. Uh, I've got to trim this panel up here a little bit, but overall the thing is coming out awesome. Okay, I've got this piece in. It is very close. You might notice I have not drilled out spot welds on this side, and that's because there's a little more of a gap between these two, and I'm gonna have to kind of seam weld on this edge. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've notched this little spot, and what I'm gonna do is the battery's gonna be right here, and I'm gonna use this spot as my chassis ground. So, I'm gonna take a piece of pipe. This will be a little experiment. I'm gonna cut the pipe in half vertically, and I'm gonna try to make like a little U channel right here so that I have enough room to like turn nuts and bolts and that kind of thing in this little corner. All right, I've got my little half pipe. Hey, it's a half pipe. Let's go ride. Uh, I've got my little half pipe ready to weld in. I've got to cut the hole and throw a couple of tacaroonios in here. Before I fully weld it in, I wanted to just kind of position it and make sure that we were still good and centered. And uh, I think it looks good. I can get a finger in here to, to put a bolt on. I can probably get a wrench in there if I need to. All right, I'm gonna finish welding this thing up and hit it with a little grind. All right, I've got this thing welded in. So now what I'm gonna do is just put this little back plate right here and I'm gonna tack that in and then grind the edges down and weld it around the outside seam. So that's what it looks like all finished up and I'll run the ground to my battery, which will be right here, right up there. And that'll be the main ground for the car. Now there are two other spots I have to figure out. One is right here. I've got to make a little plate that effectively just goes right there. I'm going to put some captive nuts on actually each side, one for the battery and one for the hull tech. All right, so, oh wow, look how, <laughs> Look how high this table is. All right, so now that that's done, I've got what I think is gonna be a really fun project to do, uh, cause I've never done it. Of course, I've never done any of this stuff, but I'm gonna make this kind of battery tie down strap out of that same 18 gauge steel that I had. So I'm gonna try to mock some sort of template up. And the idea is I'll probably do some sort of triangle situation here on top. Come down and then I'll attach it to some captive nuts that I have to weld into the bottom side of the left side floor pan that I was just working on. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. So I think what I want to do is kind of two straps down the side and then one in the front. To do that, I want to measure the center of this square and then make a 45 degree right from the center. Okay, here's what we've got. I've got my little triangle piece here. Every one of these little outriggers is a little short so that it puts some downward pressure on when you uh, clamp it in. I'll put rubberized material probably on the inside of all this stuff. That's the basic shape. Let's cut it out of metal. got my bracket set up. I've got my captive nuts right there and ready to go. 
So I'm just gonna drop the negative on here and then tack these on so the captive nuts are where they are supposed to be. All right, let's see how we did. One thing I didn't do that I wish I had was you're supposed to protect the threads of your bolts so you don't get any welding slag on them. But this is coming great. I'm not worried about it. There it is. Beauty. All right, guys, it is the next day and um, I got a ton more work to do today to finish this off. I could not be happier with how this battery thing ugh, turned out. This thing came out great. It's exactly what I wanted. I now have to do basically the exact same process um, on the other side, but for my Haltech ECU. So I need to cardboard aided design, set this Haltech stuff up where I want it, create a template out of paper, make it out of metal, bend it all up, weld on the captive nuts, and then we'll be good to go on this side. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Just assume that it's the exact same process. By the way, do you know that I worked for 13 hours in the garage yesterday? That was a long day. Um, today's probably another six or seven, I imagine. But uh, it's fun. You know, when you do things you love, it's a lot of fun. Okay, all of those welded nuts are in. That took way, way, way longer than I thought it was going to. I'm gonna pull the engine back out so I can correctly trim the stuff I need to trim. All right, after about 15 minutes of grinding, I got this part all cleaned up. And that I'm gonna weld in here to stop from like any oil canning. So it's gonna give this sort of center section support. And then everything else should be pretty well supported, but this part in particular I was worried about. Um, and I know a lot of you guys said to, um, you know, put beads in, but I don't have a bead roller. So uh, that is a no-go, but this I hope will do the trick. So as I continue to refine these pieces, I've got this piece of flat bar, and this is the panel that comes out this way. And this measured five and a half, and this one measured more than that. So what I've done here is just made a measurement uh, to five and a half, and then this one goes all the way to the corner. Then I'm using this piece of flat stock, and that is going to be my straight edge that I'm going to be cutting and grinding on. So hopefully that'll give me a little more of a consistent surface than just freehanding it or using my uh, cutting tool, which is what I've been doing. Well, I've just trashed my garage, but I didn't want to grind outside because it's late. I don't want to make a lot of noise. I'm a good neighbor. I'm a good neighbor. This thing now looks much better. This is much more symmetrical I painted this with some weld through primer on the back. I'm gonna to try to fit this thing up to the car and get my little steel bar in there as well. I need a dimple in this panel where the left side has the grounding, the right side doesn't and I wanna cover it up. So what I've done here is I've just clamped a, a bolt to the steel here, and then I'm just sort of hammering over the edge. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but it's forming a little dimple here, and I'm hoping it's gonna be enough for uh, to clear this little chunk. We'll see in a second. Well, it's been fun doing stuff for the first time on this. That's what I just made, which is this cool little dimple. And on the other side, it's an inset 
so I can get to the grounding bolt. So that's kind of cool, huh? So this thing looks really good. I'm pretty happy with how everything has gone together. Um, I need to make a couple of little pieces here, but I can wait for that. I can actually start welding that piece up there now, which I'm super excited about. And then I've gotten another piece of steel that I can use under here for reinforcement that I can put, uh, that I can do after as well. Here are all of the bespoke bits pre-assembly and welding in the back of the car. I can't tell you how long all of this stuff has taken to make. It is all bespoke with captive nuts and holes drilled for spot welds and dimples and divots and captive nuts. I think it's all trimmed. I think it's all basically ready to go. I've got this one piece that I'm gonna put in the back. This guy here. Hey, there's Ben. Hi, Ben. I got this one piece right here that I'm gonna put in. You remember when I was just complaining about that first little back panel? Who knew that it was gonna be another 40 or 50 hours of fabrication work to, to get to this point? Um, I still have quite a bit of trimming to do. I've done a couple things you haven't seen. One of the captive nuts was interfering with this torsion tube, so I drilled a hole, so now the captive nut goes down in there, which is great. Um, I've got to make a little bit of stuff, uh, make a little panel that goes down there. I've got a couple little panels to make there, but I think I can get the this back panel in, this cross member, and probably the seats before I put the tunnel in, the tunnel's gonna be basically like the last thing I do. But uh, it's coming together, looking great, psyched about it. Thanks for hanging in there through this whole process. You know, it's been a great learning process for me. Well, shockingly, I think I'm actually ready to weld. I literally have just spent the last three hours cutting and grinding and drilling spot weld holes and putting weld through primer and fitting and trying to get everything just perfect because once this thing's in, it's like a very permanent fixture in the car. People will see it, it's a whole thing. So I've spent an incredible amount of time on it. Now I can't believe how severely I underestimate how many hours this stuff takes to do. I have, well, I mean, just over the weekend, let's take Saturday and Sunday. Saturday was a 14 hour day, Sunday was a 12 hour day. It's Monday and I'm on hour four. So I've got, 30 something hours just in this just weekend and I and this is video number four so this is just a lot of hours to get this thing custom fabbed and you know I'm not really a fab guy and a lot of times I'm working with just hand tools so it does take a little longer to like hand hammer stuff when you've got you know a sheet metal break or something like that so anyway needless to say I'm very excited to be finally welding this thing together so I have to go top top panel then platform platform then tunnel, then back, back. That's how this thing has to go. It has to go in a particular order. And I don't know, let's get after it. First thing I'm gonna do is, this is the top portion. I've got this three quarter inch piece of plate that I'm going to weld onto the back of this. And that's gonna be kind of a structural rib as this will be sitting like this in the car. And this will be attached to the body of the car itself and it will hopefully stiffen it up. I've got another one that goes along the back panel here that stiffens up uh, against the chassis as well. So this thing should be really firm and allow for a nice sort of seat, if you will, to build everything else off of. Kind of hard to get a camera in here, but I'm using these clamps, C-clamps, D-clamps, uh, to pinch the two panels together, and then I'm putting a spot weld as I go. So I'm gonna do the back panel first, and then I'm gonna worry about uh, fixing the sides as soon as I, again, sort of double check and refit the back panels and make sure they're good to go.
Okay, now that this back piece is on, I'm gonna hit these two bottom pieces, the floorboards. It's kind of easy, because basically I've got some spot weld holes, and I've just gotta hit them down onto the top of the control arm caps that I did a couple of episodes ago. And then that's it. I'm actually gonna wrap this episode. I know I said I was gonna do the whole thing in this round, but it's just too much. This video is gonna be like an hour and I can't do that. So I'm going to hit these two bottom pieces, get them tacked on, and then in the next video, it'll be center tunnel, backs, and then this front piece. And I have to make a couple of other custom pieces as well. And then hopefully grind the whole thing down and hit some primer and holy shit, I've just done this entire back section. And by the way, haven't even made the rear seat delete yet, which is the wooden part that goes over all of this custom fabrication I just did. And now that I've done it, maybe I just leave it. I don't know. Anyway, let's get these two pieces on. And then um, I'm going to call it. It's National Margarita Day here on Monday, and I feel like uh, I'm overdue for one. Sorry, Betty. Sorry, buddy. Cool. Well, it's about six o'clock and uh, let's be honest, it's about happy hour. Now, I tried to get all of this stuff done. I think what threw me for a loop in this episode was having to do the captive nuts on each side of the floor sections, having to do the divots, uh, sort of the innie and the Audi as far as the um, grounds go. It was just a bunch of stuff that took hours, you know, and I thought it might take a few minutes, but the cool part was is that I actually got to do it. I got to fabricate the stuff that I've never fabricated before. The spot welds look great. It's all coming together really well. I've certainly measured enough times and fitted up a million different times and it's sort of all slowly coming together. I think another really good idea was putting those reinforcing ribs uh, under because there's a lot less, um, what, do they, what do they call it, oil canning. So that's good. Anyway, hope you guys learned a bit from this. I, I certainly did. And um, I think maybe one more episode of this and we should be good. Maybe. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. As always, you guys keep on rocking. Have a great day. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that little kadoosh notification bell. We'll see you next time. Thank you.